In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create effortless power, but not by the means most people are telling you. Now, here's the deal. Power is important to having a great tennis game, but it's like salt. It's something you sprinkle on as an extra thing to your meal to bring out the flavor that's already there, not the entire meal itself. Because obviously if you put too much salt on anything, it's gonna kill it, just like power. If you start using too much power in your game, it's gonna kill your game. And what's the saying? With great power comes great responsibility. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to hit the ball hard, and in the next video coming up really soon, I'm gonna show you when to hit the ball hard so you have the full package, you understand how to do it and when to do it. So stay tuned. So the reason why power is so important is because a tool we can use to disrupt other players' timing, meaning that you really hit the ball harder because by making it move quicker, it makes it more difficult for your opponent to time the ball. Now here's the thing though, hitting the ball with more power, more pace has to do with using your kinetic chain the proper way. Most recreational players are trying to hit the ball harder, but what they're doing is muscling the ball. They're actually putting in more effort and getting less return. And in this video, again, like I talked about, we're going to show you how to put in less effort and get more return. This is how the pros hit the ball, why they make it seem so effortless that when they hit the ball, it goes like hell, but they're not putting any effort to it. So what are the two elements I think of when I'm thinking of power? I think of acceleration and I think of rotation, namely rotation of my body, how my body is going to create the acceleration that I'm going to use to then transfer to the ball. And to do this, you want to understand something called the kinetic chain. It's basically a sequence, a time of how you use your body to create almost like this whip-like wave of energy. And it starts really from the ground up. So when we think about the kinetic chain, we break it down into these couple phases, starting with the ground and the legs, meaning that the moment I get lower, I'm storing energy in my legs that I can now push up and then transfer that energy to the next phase, which is my hips and torso. When you watch a lot of pros, you see the separation between their hips and their torso, meaning they're coiling against their hips. This is stretching and storing more energy that you can use. So you can see how these two leverage points, when added together, stores a lot of energy that you can then create if you do it the right way. The next phase is your shoulders, how by coiling, you're gonna uncoil through your hips and your shoulders, your shoulders and arms. So the shoulder is now gonna pull the arm around into the ball. That's another leverage point. Just by having your arm being away from your body, it can then move faster. And the last one is the hand. It's so important that at the last phase, most players are gripping the racket super tight. And this leads me to the thing that kills most power that players can generate on the court, which is tension. Everybody's so tight trying to hit the ball hard. But here's the thing, you wanna be really loose while you're hitting the ball hard. And this is counterintuitive. We think about more effort should produce more power when it's really totally different that less effort done the right way will produce more power because we're using all these energy stores that we've stored and released to the next phase, stored and released to the next phase to transfer that all the way down to the hand. But if you're tight, that's never gonna happen. And so the next part of this is showing you how to start increasing your ability to stay more loose and use your body. Now we're gonna talk about how to use your hips in a way to start turning. Most recreational players struggle with this, using their hips to turn. And then next, after you do this, is learning how to relax your arm and let that energy flow all the way through the shoulders and down to the arm and then to the racket and then to the ball. So we're gonna go step by step, taking you through a couple different exercises to make sure you train yourself to do this. The very first drill we're gonna work on is the hip turn. This is gonna really help you activate your hip and make sure you're moving one of the biggest parts of your body that's gonna to contribute to the racketed speed you're gonna develop. And so what it really comes up to is starting with your hands on your hips just like this. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pretend I'm hitting the ball this way so everybody has good context of what we're doing. I'm gonna turn my foot out slightly this direction. You'll see why in one second. And all I'm gonna do is focus on turning my hips here. And what you're noticing is that my hips are facing this direction. And again, hips are facing this direction. And I think you should do probably eight to 10 sets of just starting here, turn the toe out a little bit, and all you're gonna do is turn. And notice how my heel is coming off the ground here, and turn. And I would do this eight to 10 times just to really focus on turning. The next thing you're gonna do is start with your hand out. This represents you having your racket in your hand. Again, have that toe slightly out, and we're gonna turn. And notice how I'm not moving my arm, I'm just turning. And you can really see how I'm activating my hips to bring my racket forward or my hand forward without even swinging my racket. Now, finally, I'm gonna grab a racket. Get in the same position, hit out, racket here. And again, you can see how 
I'm not even moving the racket. My hip is doing the majority of the work. And so this is really important that you do this drill a lot to make sure that you're rotating your hips. A lot of players struggle with this. And if you can get this down, this is probably a huge portion to add a lot more power to your game. Finally, the last thing you're gonna do is grab a couple balls, and I recommend you only do this until you feel really comfortable with shadowing and getting to this point, which means you've probably already done close to 30 reps. So now that we are at this point where we're gonna hit a ball, this is how it would look. Now I'm gonna to toward, turn towards the net. A lot of times I even recommend not even turning or using this and doing this on the court. Do it on some place where there is no net so you don't have to worry about making the ball. Because a lot of times when we see this net, we see this court, our brain gets activated and going, okay, it's gonna pull out that program that says, do your normal forehand and I gotta make the ball. Making the ball is not the full importance here. The big importance is making sure you're using your hips. So making sure that I'm gonna step slightly open. Hopefully you can see that toe right there. Just like I was doing before, I'm gonna have the racket in the uh, take back position and have the ball in front. And all I'm gonna do is turn my hips. Okay, I'm not even gonna focus on like my follow through for, per se right now. And you can see how I'm not doing anything and I'm getting decent amount of power without doing anything but turning my hips. The big mistake a lot of players make is when they do this, they start trying to move their arm. And so this is what it'll look like. They'll start moving your arm and you can see how my hips are still back and they haven't rotated. Meaning that the hips started and then the arms took over. And lastly, I would say, use video. Make sure if you're doing this, have your iPhone out, just record yourself and make sure if you're gonna do this, you're making contact with your hips totally facing forward and that your arms didn't take over. A lot of players come out and they're like, I'm doing the drills, I'm doing the drills. But then when it gets down to it, when the ball actually comes, what happens is their hip starts and the arm takes over and they lose that effortless power. So this is the first phase of getting effortless power from your forehand. You gotta make sure you do this before you move on to stage two, okay? So I'll see you in stage two. Now it's time to talk about the second phase, which is learning to let the racket head work. Most players, when they're swinging, they're thinking that I have to hold on, and what happens is the racket head never gets to work. When you hear of the word lag and snap, if you've ever heard that, or um, stretch and release, most people are so focused on the lag position, so they get the racket here, but they don't understand that that position is only gained to stretch and then release. So if you're putting your racket here, yeah, it's a great position to be in, but you're actually losing a lot of the benefit of relaxing and having it stretch and then having the racket come forward with the release. And that's what letting the racket head work means. Meaning that when I start swinging, the racket head actually starts moving forward. I'm not making this come forward. It's actually being slingshotted ahead because I'm super, super relaxed. So I'm gonna take you through a couple drills to do that. Now, one key thing that I think, especially early, is to realize something about topspin. Topspin is great to control the ball but excessive topspin slows the ball down, meaning you're having to work even harder. Yes, you do see players like Nadal, excessive topspin, um, and that's great for Clay. but noticing on faster surfaces how he actually flattens out the ball a little bit more. It's not to say it's a bad thing or a good thing, but topspin will slow the ball down if you have too much excessive topspin. He relies on the ball not going through the court from the pace he's hitting, he relies on the ball jumping off the court from the spin he's hitting. So just note that, and we're focusing more on the pace and the power than the jump of a heavy ball. So the first drill we wanna do is focus on relaxing our fingers. So when we hold the racket, the racket's nice and loose. You should be, should be able to sh shake the racket around, feel nice and loose, take it all around. It shouldn't be stiff like this. If you're holding it stiff like this, that's not what you want. The racket should be able to move and wiggle and be super loose. Next, I want you to hold your wrist, okay? And the reason I want you to hold your wrist and hold your wrist and keep your hands relaxed because I want you to feel how if I start moving the racket forward with a very relaxed hand, the racket head naturally, the racket lags first and then stretches, storing energy, and then as it moves forward, that energy gets sent forward, okay? Again, I'll say that again. As I start swinging forward, the racket lags because I'm relaxed and then the energy starts being sent forward through the shot. And so that can only happen if you relax. So if you hold and start doing this, you feel the racket head work. Big mistake a lot of players are making is they get to this position and they start swinging and you notice how the racket head doesn't work anymore. It just stops compared to here. And so you can see how that stretch happens and then the release happens forward. So what we're gonna do is just do this drill where you let the hand relax and you're gonna let the racket work. 
And so you can really see how the racket's moving forward without me doing anything. I'm really relaxed and I can feel the racket going forward. If you feel that your hand's getting tight, go ahead and loosen up again. The whole reason behind me holding your wrist is holding your wrist like this, you get some wiggle room. We don't want your racket to completely snap all the way forward and when you hold your wrist, it'll kind of let you know if you're doing that. So that's the, the reason for holding your wrist. But we want to get used to letting the racket just come through and letting the racket head work. Once you get to this point, we're starting to combine what we worked on. The hips moving forward and the racket head working. So if I just drop the ball here and I'm focused on relaxing, you can see how I'm not swinging that hard and I'm getting a lot of pace. I'm not super concerned about where the ball is going right now. I'm more worried about staying relaxed and that's the key. So make sure you take this step by step. It's so important that the body starts to swing but the relaxation in the hand allows the racket to lag back and then the energy going through. It's not just about the lag. You also have to release the energy to go forward. And lastly, this can only happen in a state where you're actually moving or creating some speed. I know everybody wants to shadow and the shadows are great, but you can't really shadow this because when you stretch, it's not really a true stretch. You're just pulling your wrist back and you're pulling it forward. The true stretch is when you pull your body and the energy is starting to move the hand forward and because you're relaxed, the head gets left behind and then the head tries to catch up. That's where the lag and snap's gonna happen. So when you do this drill, start off with a moderate pace. It's really hard to start really slow. Little pace like that and then slowly increase the rate in which you start moving your hips. And you can see as I'm, as I'm driving out where the ball's going. And you can see really simply, I'm generating a lot of effortless pace. And if you combine everything else in the kinetic chain, that's just more room to get the hips moving faster, the arms moving faster, and releasing the energy through the ball. So in summary, if you're thinking about what are the key points that you should be thinking about the next time you go out, is number one, use your entire body. It's so important, and this is why the pros hit the ball with such racket acceleration, so much power, is because they're not just swinging with their arm, they're swinging with their entire body. They're using their entire body to accelerate their arm and the racket that tend to go into the ball. Number two, tension is a killer. Stop squeezing the racket so much, okay? Stop like tightening your muscles and bulging your biceps and making everything tight. You're making your body more rigid. And the more rigid your body is, the more it's gonna cut off whatever power you can create. And finally, number three is stay loose. Focus on being loose and relaxed. The more loose and relaxed, instead of choking off the power, you'll let that power flow through your entire body out to the point of where you can hit the ball harder and harder with less and less effort. The more I started working on relaxing and not putting in so much effort, the more return I got. And the sneaky thing about it is you get into this habit of like, ooh, I didn't do anything, so I got more power. Maybe I'll do a little bit more and I'll get a little bit more power. And it actually works in reverse. So when you go out there, don't try to add any more. Try to do less. If you like this video, make sure you hit this like button and subscribe to this channel. If you want more great videos on how to level up and improve as an adult, go to totaltennisdomination.org to get more great content on how you can improve your game as an adult.